So what this really made me think of was like a room full of bratty kids and they're all arguing with each other. And one side's like training volumes, all that matters. And the other side's like intensity is all that matters. And then a grown up walks in the room and he's like, shut the fuck up. And all the kids sit down and they're at full attention. And then they get schooled on why their argument is dumb in the first place. So Dante Trudell just dropped an Instagram post where he laid the hammer down on all these people obsessing over training volume. Definitely worth getting into a ton of insightful concepts that could benefit any lifter. Let's step into the office, take a deeper look at this stuff and get into it a little bit. Right, so I love this post by Dante Trudell. I've reread it now several times. It's full of really insightful concepts and things that can be really helpful to, to any lifter. If you don't know who Dante Trudell is, he's an old school bodybuilder, very well respected. He's the founder of DC Training, also known as Dog Crap Training. And so Trudell isn't super active on social media. He's a little bit more of a quiet, reserved type of guy. But when he does post stuff, it's usually super insightful. And he has my full attention um, when he posts. So let's break this post down and talk about it. So you guys know I like to keep my videos on the shorter side. Um, I'm going to try to keep it short, but this one has a lot packed in here. So I'm going to try to get through the most important parts as quickly as possible. All right, so let's start with slide one out of four. I swear to God, I've never seen so much idiotic concepts come forward in bodybuilding than I've seen over the last three years. Volume, volume, volume. How the, do you measure volume? All right, so we're getting into this volume debate that's been raging for years now that's all anyone seems to want to talk about. So he's correct there. How do you measure different individuals intensity during whatever volume they're doing? 24 sets of doing exercises half-assed that they're totally wrong for you. Volume, dude. All right, so I think the science guys would say we measure that using RIR, reps in reserve, and by visually inspecting somebody training to failure. So 24 sets of doing exercises half fast that are totally wrong for you will never beat 12 sets of productive exercises done intensely that are right for you. And this is one of the overriding themes of this entire four part post. All right, well the case that he's making is that everyone's focused on volume. So everyone's doing the same shit and they're more focused on how many sets and reps they're doing versus putting themselves into a perfect you know, mechanical position that's optimal for their body type. Let's read on before we get too deep into that. If you think that guy over there doing 24 sets of crossovers at a BS 65% intensity beats that guy's chest workout of four to five key exercises in stellar productive mechanical positions for himself with incredible intensity, then you're an idiot. I fully agree with that statement. This is really important stuff for any lifter, okay? If all you focus on is volume, you're really missing the point that not only the exercise selection that you choose, but the way that you perform those exercises is critical, all right? Everyone's a little different. The angles that you take in a bench press, for example, on an incline bench between 10 different people will all be a little bit different. The way you position yourself, the way you perform the movement, those are things that you have to start thinking about versus just how many reps you're doing. I guess I cannot repeat this enough. This is about and always has been about being in productive mechanical positions and the use of productive exercises for your unique physical makeup. Regardless of the workload you deem for yourself as necessary, that is secondary. And then progressing forward with those productive exercises. So let's really understand this point in detail because this is extremely important, okay? He's saying, first, you find the, the ideal perfect mechanical position in an ideal movement for yourself. And then you work on progressing that movement forward. Most people just hop into an exercise because they see everyone else doing it. They never give any thought to to what's optimal for themselves. You know, maybe a different positioning, maybe a different movement altogether. So taking the time to figure that stuff out before you start progressing forward is really important. All right, so on to post two, and this one is just straight fire. If you have to count up all the progressive warm-up sets to get to your top sets, so it fits into your volume box you're stuck in, go right ahead. If you have to do four sets with roughly the same reps with your top weight after warm-ups in every exercise, because again, it fits your volume box, the sad fact might mean that you just cannot generate the intensity of another guy who can do it in one to two top weight sets. So here we're jumping right to the front lines of this high intensity versus high volume battle. And the argument he's making here is pretty clear. He's saying that these high volume guys, they need all that extra volume simply because they're just not able to generate the intensity on a regular consistent basis needed to do it with less total sets. And this is really the gist of a big part of this post, right? This is the punchline right here. If you need to add volume because you cannot create the remodeling scenario that needs to happen versus someone who gets after it and can create the remodeling scenario, so you need extra volume to create the same process that those other guys can do in one to two top sets of an exercise, go right ahead. 
So it's not complicated what he's saying right here. He's saying, you know, you need that extra volume because you simply are unable to generate the necessary intensity that would drive adaptations. So you need more sets to do it than someone who's able to generate enough intensity to drive adaptations with less work. Again, what you have there is really the essence of the battle between HIT and high volume. All right, here's another heavy hitter. Do you know what bodybuilding is about? It's about doing today what you could not do yesterday and then an adaptation process takes place. So when you add a whole bunch of junk volume for the sake of volume, guess what that does after your very first exercise you're trying to beat in your workout? It cuts into your strength that you need to make gains in the second exercise in key mechanical position. This is an incredibly important aspect of training, right? The entire purpose of you going to the gym and training is progressive overload. Over time, you have to demonstrate progress, all right? There's plenty of dudes in the gym who year after year are still benching the same amount of weight for the same reps. and They're just going through the same shit over and over without progress. And of course, they have no physique progress either, right? So this whole point here is that the purpose of training is to drive adaptations via progressive overload. And if you're doing a bunch of junk volume on each subsequent exercise, you're gonna be unable to beat your previous performances and demonstrate progressive overload. So that volume is indeed junk volume because it's fucking up the rest of your session. You're hooked on this volume concept that is one, unmeasurable across different lifters due to intensity and effort, and two, is great at burning up glycogen, energy, strength that you just might need for max efforts in the following exercises of a workout. Again, to demonstrate progressive overload. Post three is important because he differentiates his philosophy versus like a Mike Menser on the extreme end of HIT. All right, he says, I've never seen so many people zero to 100% in my life. I've never read a Mike Menser book, but the snippets I've seen at the end of his life of one set of cable crossovers every 28 days Seems pretty ridiculous to me. I think we can all agree at this point, well, most of us, that the Mike Menser approach, which I think isn't even how he really trained for most of his career, of one set of everything and then taking five days off, seven days off, probably won't work for most people, right? If you look at Trudell's style of training, it is not anything like Mike Menser or even Dorian Yates. It's a lot different. And we need to understand that high intensity is a philosophy. It is not a training program. So you have many different flavors of high intensity. Everyone coming out of the woodwork pronouncing that volume is the key to making gains when progression and most of all different exercise and most importantly different mechanical positions done for a body part are the key in everything. If those four exercises you do for 12 sets and the mechanical positioning they represent do not work for you and your specific physique, then doing 22 sets of those unproductive exercises is not gonna make a big difference. So again, guys, like super critical point to understand that he's saying right here. You can do all the fucking volume that you want. If you're doing volume and movements that are not very productive for you, that are not optimal for your physique and your body type, then you're just doing a whole bunch of junk volume versus doing less work, but making it optimal and great mechanical positions for yourself where you really feel what you're doing. And then taking those exercises that work really, really well for you personally and pushing them hard as fuck and not only pushing them hard as fuck but but pushing them hard and progressing them over time on a regular basis i am and always have been about progression key exercises that make a body part respond and getting some recovery so they can start the whole remodeling processes again quickly the fact that my methodology is included in low set training is funny to me and you'll see why below extremely important all right what he's saying here is that you know, the purpose is to generate enough stimulus through your training to start a remodeling process of the muscle gains, right? In order to do that again, after you've already done it, you need a period of recovery. So optimal training means pushing the muscle very hard to initiate a remodeling process and then getting ample amounts of recovery so you can start that remodeling process all over again. And by his own admission here, he never intended his training style to be low volume or even HIT probably. He simply came up with this program because he believed it's what is optimal to work best to build muscle over time. All right, the fourth post, the last one, gets into how he, if he actually counts all of his warm-up sets, his program looks like a high-volume program. But he's saying that all these warm-up sets really don't count to him because it's the same shit over and over again. It's, it's nothing that's hard enough to drive any kind of an adaptation or remodeling process. So all of his warm-up sets look like a ton of volume, but to him, he doesn't even count that because to him, it's meaningless which I agree with. Most of your warm-up sets, if you only did the warm-up sets, you would never make any progress for the rest of your life. All right, so the last sentence in here, can you look back and see that you're training heavier than one year ago for a certain rep range? Are you able to recover fully to train that body part again and repeat, repeat, repeat? That is success and that is what I am about from point A to B as quickly as I can. All right, I think you can agree with me if you're into training and this kind of stuff, this post is absolute fucking fire. 
Um, there's so much to take in here and to think about. I've been thinking about it now for a couple of days. It's such a great post. So I'd love to hear you guys' comments of what you think about this. In the if you like this content, subscribe, give me a like. Let me know what you guys think in the comments about uh, this thread if you have a look at it. Definitely ready to have a dialogue about it. Let's talk.